a, a guide, a, a guide to good food. You know, the beacon light, a guide to good food. That's why I called. That's why they gave the name the beacon. I'm Charles Reagan Wilson. I'm a professor of history and Southern studies. I'm former director of the Center for the Study of Southern Culture. I came to Oxford in the late summer of 1981 to start my new position at the university. And I'm sure I went to the Beacon the first week, would be my bet. The Beacon, we opened in um, April 15th, 1959. My dad had, been a, uh, had worked on the campus for 20 years and uh, left there and opened this up in, uh, in April. Uh, my mom joined him in about a year later, and uh, that was in 59, and evidently we're doing something right. We're still here. In those days when it started in the 50s, of course, it was racially segregated, like eating places in the, in the South were. But African Americans would have um, been doing a lot of the work, cooking and, and cleaning, and, but they were able to enjoy the food at takeout. They would do takeout food. Uh, but that was typical for the South and cafes in, in those days. At the time when I first started working, we had a delivery service, and we had car hops, and we had uh, uh, the go orders, you know, all that. We used to run two grills, one for delivery, and, and uh, the other one, you know, on the inside for inside orders. My name is Tony Myers. And my job description, I guess, is um, I guess I own the Beacon. Um, of course, I've waited tables this morning. I, sometimes I cook. And if you're in the restaurant business, you better know how to do it all. My name is James Allen Cook. I've been working here for 50 years. I've been here since 1997. Since 2000. First, I, I was working as a dishwasher, you know, when I first started. I was still going to school. Then I car hopped, then I went to cooking. I was cooking by the time I was 18. When I come in the mornings at 6, I open up. I just get everything ready, make coffee and cook biscuits, and things like that. Just get ready for the morning. Well, I prep. I do breakfast um, orders, and um, sometimes I read the board. But just a little everything, sometimes I clean. Just whatever needs to be done, I get in and do it. I wash dishes sometimes. Just whatever needs to be done try to make sure it's done smoothly. All our, all our employees have been here, uh, got, they're just, I don't, I don't know what it is about us. I don't know why they like us, but I mean, we, we treat them with respect and, uh, and uh, we're kind of a family and uh, I help them when I can and, and they help uh, me. I guess everybody have their different attitudes, but I'm the type that'll get along with anybody, you know, hey, <laughs> you know, but um, everybody's has been good to me here. Try to you know get along with everybody because you can't have a whole lot of 
animosity in the kitchen, you know, with each other, all them knives and stuff. <laughs> we fuss and fight sometimes, but we all love each other and we make up. I think that's the, that's one of the good parts, is that we can snap at one another and, and still be okay at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you get heated up, but you let that go, you know what I'm saying? Everybody gonna step on somebody's feet every once in a while saying something they might not lack, but you let that go. It was more of a working class diner, and it's always had that character about it. Uh, the lawyers would go to, to Smitty's, but uh, the, the contractors and the plumbers, the engineers, uh, others would go to, to the Beacon, and university professors, of course. Um, so it was, it was a mixed group, uh, diverse group, uh, but the feel was like a diner, and so that was very appealing. Uh, we have a, have a good student trade uh, for breakfast. I think students recognize the Beacon as a staple of Oxford as far as restaurants go, and no matter how many restaurants come up in the area, their beacon, you know, will always have customers. It has a really loyal customer base, and students are a part of that. Uh, we didn't hear it. you're liable to be eating with football, basketball coaches. There's a senator in, I uh, mean, you know, a House of Representatives. So, you know, just tons of judges, lawyers. Oh, I love my customers. I do. That's the that's the favorite part about the job. It's my social life. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you get to know everybody individually, get to know people's names. We pretty much know what anybody wants to eat when they walk in the door. Everybody's a creature of habit. They eat the same thing every day. Yeah, I know a lot of them by name, you know, by seeing them out in the, in the neighborhood and then, you know, by being in here. A lot of times they come and they ask for me to fix their food. Yeah, I think that's sweet. <laughs> Made me feel special. <laughs> I'm Rylan Sneed. Uh... I and my son and a young engineer named Paul Cushnino on Precision Engineering here in Oxford started in 1976. Before I started working here, I didn't know anything about it. I just knew that a lot of old men hung out here, but I didn't know anything. My name is Sid Johnson, and I was uh, born in Oxford. I grew up in a little town of Ashland about 50 miles from here. Dad was county agent, and, and uh, my mom was a home demonstration agent. This is Tally, this is Ty, and this is Duke. I eat here every day and the dogs get to come. The Beacon has its own atmosphere and distinctive character within Oxford, I think. It is uh, down home, it's family oriented. Uh, you see a lot of older people uh, there who come every day. I have the sense of the way the, the waitresses greet them, that they're there every day for their lunch, whatever it may be. He walks in and doesn't have to order. And, and they they charge them, they run a bill for them. They and it's a, a home to a lot of clubs that gather there and, and um, have their, their their weekly breakfast or lunch as a, as a group. And that contributes to the sense of community. I think the Beacon is a very important part of the Oxford sense of community. That that group is our coffee club. Uh, it's, they started on the square at, uh, at Smitty's. So they, they moved their, their group out here. It's mainly a, a group of started out as a group of men around the square that had businesses on the square and they would you know walk to Smitty's and but now they've enlarged it and they have oh, about 16 or 18 uh, people that will come every morning to have coffee. They be here every day sitting right there. You want you know one of them you'll know where to find it. <laughs> Nine o'clock day in the beaker. My grandfather was a member of the coffee club and I know a few members so I think they kind of also have this stable kind of point in Oxford, especially Oxford residential life. People know who they are and know what they do and that kind of thing. We have a good time. I mean, it sort of gets me out of the routine. I, I look forward, I, I get depressed if I don't get to come to the coffee meeting. That being a part of that group is, is the highlight of, of, of my week. And being, uh, just keep it up with what goes on around, not just in Oxford, but or in Washington, but in the world.
or my family's from Middle Tennessee, and my, when we would visit my grandmother in the summer, she made the same kind of food you'd find at the Beacon. We do a lot of homemade stuff. It's, it's you know, we do breakfast, straight, straight breakfast. You know, we use real eggs, and we do real hash browns. You gotta, you gotta use good quality bacon, good quality sausage. You know, our, our pancakes are homemade. Uh, all our gravies are homemade. Everybody, you know, work together. Well, I prepare the food, and we got one to catch orders. We got another to prep. The hardest time to get ready to start serving meal, everybody come together and put it out. I think it represents traditions of eating. Um, you know, there didn't used to be a lot of restaurants in the South. Southerners tended to eat at home. They were so family oriented. Uh, plus, uh, they lived in rural areas and small towns where you didn't have a big enough base to have big fancy restaurants. So people ate um, what we think of as southern food, sometimes called soul food. Nowadays, you're, uh, uh, where did your chefs go to culinary school? They say, well, we don't have chefs, we have cooks. I'm the chef cook. I do all the prepping and stuff, fixing spaghetti sauce and the dressing. All that stuff, you know. I think that the beacon really preserves that older tradition uh, of not a fancy plate lunch, uh, but a very uh, simple, uh, unpretentious plate lunch. <laughs> it hadn't changed much. I don't, it hadn't changed a lot. Now I guess that's one of the good things about why I like to come here. We, we still serve fried chicken and hamburger steak every day, and. Uh, I know for the last 40 years we've served chicken and dumplings on, on Friday and uh, chicken and dressing on Wednesday and spaghetti on Saturday. And it's just, people just know if you, that's what you're going to get when you come on those days. They painted a few walls and put up a few new light fixtures, but not much has changed. Nothing changed. <laughs> it's always, you know, been a good location. And Good bid. The Beacon has outlasted all those other places. The, the, the Town Square Cafe that was Smitty's is, is now an upscale restaurant 208. Um, but the Beacon continues on its way. I don't think anybody has the, the, the closeness, the tightness that we have here because everybody that's worked here has been here forever. We, we also become part of our customers' families, I feel like, and they become part of the Beacon family. Once you find out about the Beacon, you'll love it. It's because we got good food and we cook with love. <laughs> as long as, as long, I think as long as we can give you a good meal with some good service and a decent, uh, fair price, you'll come back. So. You know, it's, it's been nice. It's been nice working here, you know. I must have been. I'm still here, you know, 50 yeah. years, you know. So, I, it's, you know, I've, I've enjoyed it, you know, no more. Future of the Beacon, um, I don't know, probably I get 10, 10 or 12, 13, 14 more years. I don't know how much longer it's going to be open, but uh, I plan to be here until the end. So whatever happens, I'm here. I told Tony we'll just have to whip it out, you know, just do what we got to do. I don't think we'll just close it. I'm, I'm hoping that someone would like to buy it and carry on the name. But it, it won't be it won't be the Myers family. As long as it's standing, I'll be here. Mm -hmm. I'll never do any anything else. With all the recent changes in Oxford in the eating uh, environment, with upscale restaurants, um, I think that the Beacon really preserves that older tradition. The Beacon, do you? This is the oldest restaurant around here, and you're not gonna find nothing nowhere like the beacon <laughs> this is the beacon <laughs>